Well, welcome back. Thank you for coming. I was going to tag this on to the end of the last video, but I sort of went on a bit longer than I intended to. So I thought I'd do it as a separate one. And the bottom line of this is the louder you talk, the more aerosol droplets come out of your mouth, the greater the risk of infection if you are an infected person. So loud speech is much more risky in terms of disease transmission than quiet speech. And singing, which I'm not going to demonstrate, um, is, uh, is, is the worst of all. But let, let's crack on with that data. So if you, if you want to skip this video, then the bottom line is don't talk loudly in public places. That's kind of the main message. But let's, let's go on to look at the detail. There's a very rigorous scientific paper. I'm actually quite impressed with this. I had to read it a little bit before I knew what they were talking about. Even then, I don't understand all the details of the physics. I wouldn't pretend to, but the, the implications are very clear in this paper. Aerosol emission and su super emission, I like that word, super emission, super emitters uh, during human speech increases with voice loudness. So this is very simple. The louder you speak, the more transmission there's going to be because there's way, way more particles coming out of my mouth now than there is now. So um, cough and sneezing gives out visible droplets and smaller ones. So when you cough or sneeze, you can see it's quite hideous, isn't it? You can you can see uh, this cloud of uh, droplets coming out. And that's because a lot of those droplets are visible and the visible droplets are bigger. 50 micrometers and upwards, even way, way, way bigger than that. Um, well, I mean, you know, if you cough on your computer screen, you can have to wipe the wipe it off, don't you? Quite, quite revolting. Um, but but the what, what it's saying is coughing and sneezing here. Um, we've known for a long time that's associated with aerosol transmission because we get the bigger droplets coming out and you can see those. But also you get a lot of smaller ones that are aerosolized as well. And we know the bigger ones because the heavier drop out quicker. But the smaller ones, the aerosolized ones, can stay in the air for hours. This is why it's so important to ventilate. We need lots of through drafts, as we looked at just a couple of days ago with some interesting uh, poetry. Um, so normal speech, you just get the small droplets. So when I'm speaking to you now, as I'm speaking to you now, Many droplets are coming out of my mouth, but you don't see them because they are so small. But they are there. It's just that they're invisible. So it's just the small ones. Whereas coughing and sneezing, you get the bigger ones as well. But the small ones are probably even more dangerous for disease transmission because they hang in the air for longer. And also when we breathe in, they can go right down into the bottom of our lungs. That's why microparticulate pollution is so dangerous because the smaller the particles the more it penetrates down into the towards the alveoli and indeed into the alveoli of the lungs causing infection in this case infection at a much lower level so normal speech just the small ones uh, one micrometer in diameter and these are invisible so that's a micrometer a thousandth of a millimeter so these are too small to see so this research clearly says that it's all coming out of my mouth now. It's just that it's too small to see. And they can carry a variety of communicable respiratory pathogens, including viruses. So even these small ones, they're only like a micrometer in diameter, but on the same scale, a virus will be about that size. So one particle could potentially be carrying quite a lot of viral particles quite easily in one droplet. And of course, these can float in the air until they're breathed in by someone else. Remember, we had a saying a few couple of months back, keep your droplets out of my mucous membranes. Um, particle emission during normal human speech positively correlated with loudness, amplitude. Right, the louder you speak, the more particles. It's that simple. So quiet speech called low ampli amplitude speak, speech. So at the moment... I'm actually giving out between one and 50 particles per second in quiet speech, one to 50 particles, droplets, potentially carrying viruses per second. That's what I'm currently uh, emitting. I've lost again, there we are. But with louder speech, 
100 to 500 or more particles, so at least 10 times more particles per second with louder speech. So quiet speech, louder speech. Now, this group was very interesting. They tried this with different languages. So they did these experiments with people speaking English, Spanish, Mandarin and Arabic, and they got the same results for all languages. So this is not a characteristic of language, it's a characteristic of the way that humans speak, which um, is interesting. Um, now, what they found was that if you count aloud from 1 to 100, that releases six times as many uh, particles potentially carrying viruses as an individual cough. So in other words, um, 100 words... 100 words is releasing as many micro droplets into the air, potentially carrying viruses, as, as coughing. So speaking, 100 words is the same as a cough. And singing was six times. So singing six times compared to normal volume speech. So singing is putting out way more, way more particles. So singing in confined areas unfortunately is off the is off the hymn sheet for uh, a little time to come yet unfortunately now some people were super emitters super emitters so some people and for re the reasons for this weren't clear but some people i could be one of them you could be one of them we don't know but I remember back at the start of this, we, we, we started talking about super spreaders of infection. And a super spreader is a single infected person who infects, for some reason, many, many other people. And the reasons for that weren't clear. Well, one of the reasons seems to be that some people, during normal speech, are emitting 10 times more water fluid droplets than other people. So I, I may be admitted, I may be um, uh, coming out of my mouth when I'm speaking. It could be that there's 10 times more droplets than come out of your mouth when you're speaking, and that would make me a potential super spreader. And of course, we don't know, but some people are super emitters. They are putting out lots and lots of these micro droplets of water and fluids from the respiratory tract. You can't see them, but they are there if, in experimental situations. And these can be suspended in the air and the, um, the smaller particles suspended in the air for a longer period of time, as we've said. They can be there for hours and they penetrate deeper into the lungs. Now, if these small particles get deeper into the lungs, then potentially it's taking the infection down into the lungs. So the infection could start in the lungs, potentially giving rise to a more serious infection like pneumonia compared to if the infection was starting in the upper respiratory tract. So these small particles are even more dangerous for that reason. And of course, I'm going to keep emphasising this. If you, as a non-infected person, wear a mask, that reduces the amount of virus you're exposed to if the virus is in the air, and that makes it more likely, we believe, as mounting evidence suggests, you're going to get minimal or asymptomatic disease. So wear a mask for your own protection. But these small particles that some people give out in large amounts, so in other words, everyone's giving out these particles, just that some people are giving out 10 times more than others. Right, what are the uh, applications of this? Well, normal speech, if I'm talking now, it's probably about 10 decibels. But studies have shown that in a lot of restaurants, the ambient noise is 70 decibels. So uh, I'm fairly quiet now. I don't have trouble with noises outside people cutting the grass and trucks and dogs barking and things as you probably, probably heard on videos but fortunately I'm in a fairly quiet environment now so I'm probably speaking at around about 10 decibels at the moment but the ambient noise in restaurants is 70 decibels this means when you're in a <coughs> public place like a restaurant or a pub or something you just got to talk a lot louder otherwise the person next door to you just can't hear you over the background ambient noise. And of course, ambient music makes it even worse. If there's ambient music, you have to talk over the music to be heard. Um, 
I, I hate ambient music myself. Um, love music when I want to hear, listen to it, but if it's there all the time, it just gets on my nerves. Um, many of you, by the way, have written in about Sophia's uh, music yesterday. Uh, like me, you, you loved it. We'll play that again probably sometime. It was great. Um, so the ambient noise in restaurants, music, pubs. So what this means is we need to have quiet zones in public places. Now, if everyone in the restaurant is talking quietly, then I can talk quietly as well. If I'm at the restaurant or I'm in a pub, if everyone's talking quietly, then I, I can talk quietly as well. But if you've got some bellicose drunks next to you yelling and making a right racket, then you've got to talk louder to hear whoever you've gone to the pub with and for them to hear you. So what we need to do is stop all the music in public places for the time being. Well, for, for, for my, from my point of view, stop all music in all public places forever. I, I don't like it at all. Um, but we need to stop it for the time being so that people don't have to talk over the music. Um, and uh, we have to have uh, quiet zones in public places. Now, if we have walls, let, let's say a, a waiting area for a hospital, let's say um, uh, an airport, uh, a train station, a, any uh, supermarket, any public places, if, if everyone was talking quietly, then it wouldn't be this competition to, to be heard, which we often have. So if we have quiet zones and people get used to talking quietly, and people will actually talk fairly quietly, if they can get away with it. But most people don't shout. There are some people that whenever you, whenever you go and talk to them, they shout at you. It really gets on your nerves. Um, sometimes... Well, I mean, if people have got their ears blocked or up or something, that can make you shout louder. But and I can think of a few people, and I'm sure you can, that whenever whenever they're talking to you, it's as if they're sort of preaching at you or giving you a lecture, you know, it really gets on your nerves. So we need to be aware of that and just tone it down, especially in public places. Then everyone's talking quietly. We take away this competition and that will reduce transmission. So I thought that was a very interesting study. I hope you find it interesting as well. So the bottom line is loud speaking, uh, 10 times more particles than, than um, quiet speaking. The aerosolized particles hang in the air for hours. They can go right down into the lungs. So we need to minimize them and we need to minimize them by wearing a mask to protect myself. So that if I am infected, I get a lower viral dose. Therefore, I'm more likely to be minimally symptomatic or asymptomatic. We also remember that loud speech is, is giving out 10 times more particles. Uh, that singing gives out six times more particles than uh, normal speech and that saying a hundred words gives out the same number of uh, droplet particles as a cough so let's uh, let's have a quiet let's have a quiet few months that would be nice actually thank you for watching always great to have you thank you for coming back